What your teenager wants you to know, but won't tell you. I thought I'd read you a letter that I received from a parent who received it from their teenager. And if this is something that might be going on with your teenager, you might want to have them watch and listen to this and see what they relate to. And if they relate to a lot of it, or even any of it, have a conversation with them. Dear folks, Given all the things I'm doing that have disappointed you, I'm hoping you won't just see this as another excuse or a way of manipulating you. Both of which I'm very capable of doing and during other times have even been a master at. In fact, I've been so good at doing both of those, I'm afraid to tell you what I'm about to. And have you think that I'm just being dramatic and only trying to get attention or get out of taking responsibility for my actions and paying the consequences for them. Today, I have a little bigger fish to fry. I'm losing it. I'm losing my mind, my sense of who I am, of where I belong, and I'm spending more and more time wondering if life is worth living. I know I don't have any reason to feel like ending it. I know that so many people have it worse than me. I even know that I have all the reasons to live. I just don't feel any of them. I felt alone for some time now. It hasn't been a few days or even a few weeks. It's been at least months. Also, the intensity of rage that I feel not only chills you, which I know is why you back off when it gets really ugly between us, it chills me. I hate hating you more than I hate you. When I hate you at the level I'm capable of hating you, I feel like destroying things. That has escalated and finally shifted to thinking of just destroying me. But in reality, I don't want to destroy anything. I just want to destroy the pain I feel and make it go away. But it won't go away, and I can't make it go away. The reasons I drink, do drugs, and cut on myself, all of which scare the crap out of you, are because they all relieve me. When I'm stone cold sober and drug free and the pain and the craziness intensifies, all I can think about is numbing myself. I don't do alcohol and drugs to get high. I do them just to get by. And when I cut on myself, which terrorizes you, I feel like I'm cutting out the pain or at least feeling something. And that gives me relief from the pain of feeling nothing. Assuming you won't my, rub my face in this, which might actually wake me up or push me over the edge, but I don't think you want to play Russian roulette with me, you probably ask me what you can do to help. And I wish I had an answer to tell you. Actually, the answer I'd like to tell you, I am telling you in this message and hoping you will just listen. I think the hole in my being and the missingness at my core needs warmth from you. Mom, occasional kindness from pathetic, rational, lecturing, clueless dad is not the same. Which, Mom, I don't think you can either get to it because all of us, including dad, fight you or because you, are no, no, you no longer have any warmth either because you didn't get it from grandma or because you got worn out by all of us. Dad, you're not off the hook in this. I think you run interference between mom and me and try to get the peace and keep the peace. And then I think you find your home away from home when you get away to go to work or travel for work or play sports with your buddies. Maybe a start would be if I saw each of you making the effort to understand me, especially when you have no chance of really achieving it. There is a good chance that neither of you will be able to understand me because I am as different from you as you are from each other. But it might help if I saw you continuing to try and continuing to ask or say things to me like, tell me what's happening and how you feel in another way. Because I see that I'm not getting it and I want to get it. And then tell me, at its worst, what's it like? Ask me that. And if I push you away, you might do well to stand firm and say, we can't go away because as your parents, we can't allow you to feel so alone in hell and we've got to do whatever we can to get you up. Sorry to tick you off. It's in the parents' rule book, which you'll figure out when you become one. One of my friend's parents actually sleeps outside her room on the floor, which my friend both resents and feels safer with. More importantly, I think it might help if I saw you not getting so frustrated and throwing your hands up because I keep pushing back and won't agree to what you think should make me feel better. Going along with it 
to get you off my back hasn't worked and actually makes me feel worse. I think I can live with the pain, I just can't live with the suffering. I think the suffering happens when I feel alone in my pain for a long period of time and it doesn't let up. I think if I could feel less alone from the inside out, I could listen to what you and the world are telling me from the outside in. Feeling alone is feeling that I'm unpaired with what everyone else seems to have. Being unpaired with a future worth living causes me to feel hopeless. Being unpaired with any help that I or others can provide causes me to feel helpless. Being unpaired with a reason to go on causes me to feel that everything is both pointless and meaningless. And being unpaired with doing or accomplishing all the things I'm supposedly capable of causes me to feel worthless. And feeling unpaired with all of those things causes me to feel despair. I feel like I am trapped in a deep, dark, coal mine shaft. I've run out of food and water and I'm running out of oxygen and time. I keep hearing people digging to find me. I hear them thinking they have found me and are all excited. But what I know that they don't know is that they're digging in the wrong direction because one of them got a glimpse of a doll in a different mine shaft that, that I left there many years ago. And everyone thinks it's me.